Hey, hey, welcome back. Hope you had a great weekend. We are on chapter 6, page 64, a peanut butter sandwich. I told you to be careful, scolded Keith when his parents had gone to dress and Ralph had crawled down his arm and into his hand. Ah, it wasn't my fault the door blew shut. Ralph jumped from the hand to the bedspread. Though Keith was a friendly boy, even a generous one, Ralph still did not like the feel of human skin against his paws. It must be, go it must be terrible to go through life without fur, and such a nuisance having to wear clothes that had to be washed and dried. Ralph knew all about the clothes drying. Many were the drops of water from shirts and shorts and things like that that he had dodged going in and out of his mouse hole. You didn't have to stay out so long, Keith pointed out as he began to change from his pajamas to his daytime clothes. Yeah, but what's the use of having a motorcycle if you can't go tearing around staying out late? Ralph asked reasonably. You don't have a motorcycle, said Keith. I just let you use mine, and you better be careful. I like that motorcycle, and I don't want anything to happen to it. I'll take care of it, promised Ralph. I promise. I don't want anything to happen to it either. It's going to be harder to get a chance to ride it now that my mom has seen you, said Keith. She's a terribly good housekeeper, and she's probably going to complain to the managers. Speaking of breakfast, you guys are too tidy, complained Ralph. I'm not getting enough to eat around here. Your family doesn't leave any crumbs. Huh. I never thought of that, said Keith. What would you like to eat? Ralph was astounded. This was the first time in his whole life anyone had asked him what he would like to eat. It had always been a question of what he could get his paws on. You, you mean I have a choice? He asked incredulously. Sure, said the boy. All I have to do is order it when we go down to breakfast and then bring you some. Oh. Ralph had to take some time to think. After a diet of Zwieback and graham crackers provided by little kids, bits of candy, and an occasional peanut or apple core left by medium-sized kids, or a cr crust of toast and a dab of jam left by a grown-up who had ordered breakfast sent up from room service. The possibilities of choosing his own meal were almost too much. I know what I'd like, Ralph said at last, but I don't know what you call it. Once, some people who said they were almost out of money stayed in these rooms. They had four kids, all of them hungry, and they couldn't afford to go downstairs to the dining room restaurant. So they got some bread and spread it with something brown out of a jar, and then put some more bread on top of that. They whispered all the time they were eating because they didn't want the maid or bellboy to know they were having a meal in their room. Afterwards, they got down on their hands and knees and picked up every single crumb on the carpet so no one guessed that they had eaten in their rooms. It was a great disappointment. It smelled so good, like peanuts, only better. Ha <laughs> ha! Keith laughed. That was a peanut butter sandwich. Sure, I'll bring you a peanut butter sandwich, or part of one. I'll eat part of it myself. It'll be kind of funny for breakfast, but I won't mind that. Where will you leave it? asked Ralph. Keith thought for a minute. Where do you live? He asked. Oh, in that knot hole under the window. No kidding! Keith laughed. That's the hole I poked my finger in last night. I'll say you did, said Ralph. Scared me out of a year's growth. Nobody's ever guessed it's a mouse hole because it's a knot hole instead of a chewed hole. I'll tell you what, said Keith. I'll bring up part of a peanut butter sandwich and poke it through the knot hole. Just like room service, 
Ralph could not have been more pleased with the suggestion. Uh, what about the motorcycle? he asked. Where are you going to leave that? In my suitcase, I guess. Aw, oh, come on, pleaded Ralph. Have a heart. Leave it someplace where I can get it. Well, you're out during the day. You're supposed to be in your mouse hole asleep, not riding around in the daylight where people can see you. Oh, well, gee whiz, can't a fella even look at it? asked Ralph. I bet you like to look at big motorcycles yourself. Yeah, I do, admitted the boy. Well, I'll leave it back under the bed, like I said. But you need to promise not to ride it until after dark. Boy Scouts honor. Ralph jumped off the bed and ran off to the knot hole. Ralph's home was furnished with a clutter of things that people drop on the floor of a hotel room. Little bits of Kleenex, hair, little tiny bits of paper. His mom was always planning to straighten it out, but she never got around to it. She was always too busy fussing and worrying. Now, as Ralph expected, she was dividing rye crisp crumbs among a squeaky bunch of little brothers and sisters while she waited to scold him. Ralph, if I have told you once, I've told you a thousand times, she began. Guess what? interrupted Ralph in an attempt to change the subject. Somebody in room 215 is going to bring us a real peanut butter sandwich. Ralph! cried his mother, frightened. You haven't been associating with... with... with people? Ah, oh, it's just a boy, said Ralph, deciding to keep the complete story of the dangers and the glories of the past night to himself. He wouldn't hurt us. He likes mice. But he's a person, said his mother. Well, that doesn't mean he has to be bad, said Ralph. Just like Pop used to say, people shouldn't say all mice are timid just because some mice are timid. Or that all mice play when the cat's away, just because some of them do. Just the same, said his mother. I do wish you'd be more careful whom you associate with. I'm so afraid you'll fall in with the wrong sort of friends. I'm growing up, Mom. I'm getting too old to hang around a mouse nest all the time. I want to go out and see the world. I want to go down on the second floor and see the kitchen, or on the ground floor and see the kitchen and the dining room and the storeroom and the garbage cans out back. Oh, Ralph cried his mother. Not the ground floor. Not all the way down there. You're not old enough. Yes, I am, said Ralph stoutly. Oh, honey, there's no telling what you might run into down there. Mouse traps, cats, poison. Why, out by the garbage can, you might even be seen by an owl. I don't care, said Ralph. Someday I'm going downstairs. Ooh, but think of the owls, Ralphie, implored his mom. We moved into the hotel because of the owls. It was after your Uncle Leroy disappeared and his bones were found in an owl pellet. The mother's, the mother mouse's plea was interrupted by the sound of Keith returning to room 215. Now you'll see, Mom, said Ralph to his mom and waited, anxiously, anxious lest his friend let him down. <clears throat> sure enough, Keith came to the knot hole. Psst! Psst! He whispered. Here it is. The waitress thought I was crazy ordering a peanut butter sandwich along with my cereal for breakfast. But here it is. He stuffed half of a sandwich a bit at a time into the hole where Ralph seized the pieces, and pulled them all the way through. Hey, listen, we're going to be gone most of the day. The dining room's packing us a picnic lunch, and we're going to drive along some of the back roads and visit some old mining towns. Thanks a lot, Ralph managed to say with his mouth watering. Have fun. See you tonight, said Keith. Get a good day's sleep. 
Ralph's mom could not help but being impressed by the sight of the peanut butter sandwich. <gasps> it's just like room service, she marveled. <gasps> Why, it's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and it even has butter in it. I told you he'd bring it. Ralph could not help boasting, even though his mouth was full. After sharing his feast with his squeaky little brothers and sisters, all of whom had trouble with peanut butter sticking to their teeth, Ralph curled up on a heap of shredded Kleenex and took a good long nap. When he woke up refreshed, his first thought was that motorcycle. He wondered if Keith really had remembered to leave it under the bed. He yawned and stretched and left by way of the knot hole. Room 215 was just as Ralph had last seen it. The bed had not been made, and there were no fresh towels by the wash basin. basin. Ralph ducked under the sheets and blankets that had tumbled off one side of the bed, and there, in the dim light, he caught the gleam of the chrome exhaust pipes. Yes! Keith had trusted him after all. He walked across the carpet and grabbed hold of the handlebars once more. Oh, they felt just right in his paws, oh, and he wanted to be off, speeding around the carpet. But a promise was a promise, and he had promised. Keith had kept his promise about bringing the peanut butter sandwich, and Ralph would keep his promise about not riding the motorcycle in the daytime. He tried to satisfy himself by walking around the motorcycle in the dim light under the bed, admiring all over again the sleek design of the machine. Ralph was lost in admiration and daydreams of speed and power when suddenly the room, the door to room 215 opened and the maid came in. It was too late to make a dash for the mouse hole. She'd see him. The maid stripped the blankets and sheets from the beds, shedding unwelcome light on Ralph and the motorcycle. Her feet in white sneakers moved lightly as she gathered up the sheets and pillowcases and towels and then dropped them with a soft plop beside the open door. The next thing Ralph knew, he was hearing familiar and dreaded footsteps coming down the hall, steps he had learned to fear when he was a tiny mouse. It was the head housekeeper, the woman who was in charge of all of the maids in the hotel, he recognized her steps and recognized her shoes, stout, sensible, black Oxford. And nothing was ever clean enough for the head housekeeper, and Ralph's whole family lived in dread lest she discover their mouse hole. Now, he held his breath, hoping she'd go down the hall. But no, she stepped into room 215. Good morning, Marjorie. Housekeeper spoke crisply to the maid. Be sure you clean 215 and 216 very thoroughly this morning. There has been a complaint from the guest. They suspect there are mice here. Yes, ma'am, said the maid. Look behind all the drawers, continued the housekeeper, and in the corners of the closets. Please report any evidence of mice, and be sure you vacuum under the beds. You've been getting careless lately. With that, she walked briskly down the hall. Ah, oh, the old grouch, muttered the maid as she reached into the hall for something that produced a sound that struck terror into Ralph's heart. It was the clang of vacuum cleaner attachments banging together as the vacuum was rolled into the room. Whew, that's where we're going to stop. See you in a little bit with the next chapter called The Vacuum Cleaner.